how I run. So this video, I'll show you how to adjust the uh, model that we have uploaded on Sketchfab, CubeCat 4th of May. And then uh, go to edit, edit properties. You'll be able to edit the name and the description. And then uh, if you want to edit the 3D settings, you can click on here or you can use the back window to look at the edit 3D settings. So edit 3D settings is a settings where we will change the lighting. We will put the cat in a very nice environment, have a nice lighting. Uh, I'll try to get some warm light, cool light sh shadow effect to this cat and then uh, it will look nicer than this. It will be a more warm environment. Okay, so let's try to do that. Okay, first thing I want to set the lighting first. So I go to the second tab and then uh, environments, I'll just uh, change this to one of these that looks a little bit better. Uh, for example, if I use this, it's a uh, different HDIs can, that I can use. So all these uh, have a lot of potential. In this case, I'll use this one. It has a bit of an orange effect. Change the... Uh, adjust the brightness down so that I can see the... Uh, so that it's not overexposed, okay? So I can set this as my background and then adjust the brightness slowly. So I don't want it to be over exposed to begin with because my cat has a lot of white and uh, light colored areas. Okay, so you can tell that it's already looking pretty good because this one, it has a blue color light and then it has a lot of warm light as well. Okay, so I think uh, I'm pretty okay with that for now. I'll go to the third tab and then I'll look into the materials. So this is the base uh, RGB of the material and then we can select any of this material to change it. So if, let's say I can select the ears. If you want to make the ears even darker. I don't know why you want to do that, but maybe you have your reason, you know, but you have the control on how you want it to look during the render phase. Okay, so this is how it's powerful. And then the, the roughness here is showing you how shiny it is, how much it is uh, like a real cat. So what I'm trying to say is um, for a furry texture, probably it's not as reflective. So these two are opposites. Okay, so if you make it uh, very, very not rough. Okay, so we are now on the roughness tab. If we make it very, very not rough, that means it's the opposite of metallic. That means it will not be shiny. But if you make it super, super rough, zero rough, that means it's very shiny. That means the grossiness is max. You know that means it's super shiny. So these two are opposites. So if it's uh, if it just choose whatever that makes sense to you. The default is roughness, and uh, it just shows that the uh, more objects are more rough to begin with. And then the, if you lower down the roughness, that means it becomes very shiny. Okay, why you want this year to be so shiny? It looks almost like a water bottle. It looks almost like a Coke glass bottle, you know, something like that. So it's not realistic anymore if you make it super, super not rough. Okay, so the roughness will make it not as shiny. And it's very important for most of the matte objects to be a little bit rough and then not so shiny. Okay, if you want something to be really shiny, okay, let's say something you want the eye to be super shiny, you can go to gloss and then you make it super shiny. And then somehow now you have ah, shiny eyes. Okay, so if that makes sense to you, if you want it to be shiny, go ahead and do it, but I won't. Okay, this is a cat. I want to keep it as matte and realistic as I can. All right, so uh, yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff in Sketchfab. I wish I can show you more. There's uh, immersion, like uh, you can make some part of the skin that is uh, that's more beautiful, that's like light shining through, subsurface scattering. So it's more for the light when you see through the skin. So uh, maybe I just want to show you a little bit. So as as human skin, so subsurface gathering. And then the, it's like the effect where you shine a light through your fingers with a torch light, you know? You, you see this effect happening very often. This is exactly what is called subsurface gathering, which is uh, when you see in a hu human, in a creature, and then the, when the light shines through, there's this translucency effect and then you almost see the blood within the veins underneath the skin. Okay, this is what good rendering will show. And then uh, this is what the realistic 
Pixar movies or Disney movies or good animation movies they are able to render these days. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Uh, what all these uh, different materials and what they can do and emission is to uh, make uh, something that emits light. Okay, so it's quite interesting. And uh, you will be able to set a texture to it if you were to upload this with UV. But uh, we'll just keep this uh, cat simple, so we'll not do that. Okay, but just know that it is possible. And if you want to do that, you can do it. Okay. So uh, I'm going to touch on about post-processing filters because that is very important. That's the part where I think uh, it's going to be really cool. So post-processing filters, uh, you will make your cat and your model look very finished. The whole camera scene over here is uh, what the people will see when they finish, when they jump into your scene right away. So you want to set in a nice camera angle first. And then you maybe I want a three quarter angle, and then I want the grass not to hit the uh, face of the cat. So I purposely position it in such a way where I also have some hit space, and then I save this view. Ching! It's like taking a photo. So this view is saved. So every time people look at my model, they will go to this view, and then I'm go ahead and on this. So it has this uh ambient occlusion effect to it if you want to, and then I will own. On the uh, depth of field as well, so I'm going to have a background depth of field. So if people were to look at this cat like this, they would see it more clearly, but the background would be kind of blur. So it depends on the view that they are at, and then they will be able to have some depth of field. So it looks a little bit more cute. I'm gonna do some a bit of minute if I want to, and uh, it's just gonna make it a little bit darker on the corners. Actually, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do this this time because I want this scene to be brighter. But uh, bloom, I'm definitely gonna use it. I think bloom is very very beautiful. Bloom is really great, and uh, you can uh, try to look at some of the settings I do. I don't want it to be super intense, but I want to when such that when I on and off it, you see this soft and light effect opacity on top of this that makes everything so much nicer. So actually, once I do that, what I can do is I can go back to my lighting and I push the brightness down just a little bit, and then I go back here, and then maybe I want to make this more intense. So it's like. I'm giving Bloom more power to shine this way. Okay, I'm giving this. So tweak this around a little bit. I think it's worthwhile for sure. And uh, yeah, now I'm making it so much more intense. And it might be a bit much, but I like it. I've always liked Bloom. And uh, I always think that it makes our objects look more cute. When you are doing something that's cute and animation that is more cute, this bloom effect really makes the animation pop. Okay, so yeah, so remember to save a good view and then uh, we can call this done. All right, so let's save these settings and then uh, publish it. And I would see how people view this. Okay, so when people view the model, okay, imagine you share this with your friends, you embed it on the art station, yep, they will see exactly this view, they can rotate it around, they can examine your model, okay, pretty cool, right? Alright, so uh, that's all for this tutorial, I'll see you on the next video, bye-bye!